welcome to the Misfit Squad podcast. Where we invite you to embrace your difference and to discover a spectrum of possibilities and change what's wrong about you into what is strong about you. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Misfit Squad podcast. Today we are revisiting and re-talking some more about people and animals um, and how they contribute to us and our bodies and, and what's going on with us. And um, we're really excited today to have another guest with us on our podcast. Her name is Kate Nelligan. She is an equine um, assisted life coach. And she also does trainings, um, leadership trainings with horses, assisted by the horses and such. So we're really going to talk to her about um, how, what she finds, how that works, the differences that makes, and all of the amazing knowledge she has when it comes to people and horses. And um, so without further ado, here comes Kate. Ta-da! There she is. Yay. Hi, Kate. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So we're super excited to talk about what you know about people and horses and healing and sensitivities. <laughs> yes. So I didn't really, because of course I'm a spaz, uh, we didn't, I didn't get your bio in advance. So tell us a little bit about yourself, because I did not say enough. Sure. Well, I'm an equine partner, life and career coach, and healer, speaker, and author. And essentially what I do is I partner humans and horses together in personal and professional growth and transformation. Um, because horses are so incredibly intuitive, I work with their gifts as well as my own intuition and gifts um, to help people essentially become clear, calmer, and more confident um, so that they can create more of the change they want to see in their lives. Awesome. That is so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so where should we start? What, which, what should we talk about first? Well, you know, I love if your listeners are in that space of thinking about, um, instead of thinking of what's wrong, shifting into the solutions, right? And some of the solutions that I feel like horses showcase, some of the ways of being that horses show us and role model to us that are more solution. Um, and then we also were talking a little bit about sensitivities, like how horses are so sensitive and how people can learn from them there too. Mm -hmm. Cool. So why don't we, because we've actually sort of leading up to this, we've been talking a lot recently about sensory challenges. You know, the senses, what are the senses? How many sensory systems do we have in the body? Um, and Trina and I both personally experience a lot of like personal sensitivities. <laughs> So it would be really interesting to to talk about that and and because ho horses are highly sensitive, right? So what can they help us with? What what can we learn from them? Yeah, so they are. I mean, they are prey animals, and you know they're one of the largest prey animals. If you think of that, twelve hundred pounds that can take off at a moment's notice to protect itself from a predator, and that herd mind of them all moving together in a herd in the wild. Um, but essentially, what I think is so fascinating is that they are so sensitive, and yet because they've been domestic, they've really learned how to partner domesticize. They've learned how to partner with us. Um, and they use their sensitivities to read us, right? They know our emotional state as soon as we show up and we're around them. Um, and they're often looking for us to get congruent, which is that our, our emotions and our words and our actions are, are matching. Um, and they'll call us on our bullshit, essentially. And when we're acting from places where we're like, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. And our body language is screaming that we're not. So that sensitivity that they have as prey animals has helped them survive and thrive on the planet for a long time, longer than us. But it's also makes them such good partners, coaches, you know, therapists, teachers, and healers because they can show up um, and read people so quickly. So often therapists will refer to equine coaches or equine practitioners because they know that in one session we can get to the heart of an issue with a client that could potentially take six months to a year in therapy because the horse is 
is quickly showing us like um, this client is actually dealing with a lot of anger and they'll start to mirror things, um, especially if you're working with a herd of horses, a group of them uh, on what's going on, whether it's in relationships or family dynamics, they'll show us really quickly what's happening um, because of their sensitivity. And, you know, I'm a highly sensitive person myself and an empath. And I find that the horses kind of get me and I get them. Um, and so I think a lot of what the horse world can actually learn from horses too, is how to slow things down and how to even soften touch. A lot of people are like patting horses or being bigger with them than I think they even really need to be because horses are reading so many minute little moves, um, which helps us learn too, because we're often communicating through body language, right? Like so much information. Yeah. One thing that's interesting, well, two things pop like. Um, actually, just this morning, there was a fairy at the ranch trimming and shoeing a couple of horses, and the owner was like, oh, what's wrong? Do you think, what do you think happened? Because this, in this both of these horses are normally very easy, right, for the farrier, but they were like jiggy and stompy, and like, and then like about 15 minutes, we were like, well, that farrier is not in a very good mood today. <laughs> and even my friend, who's like, not really into the, you know, not into the whole like aware and you know, all the stuff that we talk about. She was like, I think it's because he's in a bad mood. That's good. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so that's just so funny to me that we're talking about this. And I didn't even realize that like, I just had that example this morning. And then one thing that I no noticed that's changed for me is, and I'm sure you've had something, we were all trained. We learned behaviors about how to deal with a horse who's like misbehaving or, you know, and I find that a lot of what I was shown how to be with the horse is to react and to correct them for misbehaving. And what I find I do more now is take a breath and be like, well, what am I doing? Where, where am I, what am I exhibiting in my body right now? Yeah. Instead of just like stop being a dickhead. Yeah. Which I sometimes still say, but. <laughs> does make me check with myself in and and also there's nothing quite like a 1200 pound animal showing you six feet away from you what's coming up exactly exactly yeah. and what's neat too is that if we can learn this from working with horses by partnering with them on how to check ourselves our own emotional state our own thoughts our own um energies that we can do that then in our partnerships right in marriages and relationships exactly. with our kids i find so often when i'm coaching moms even that their kids are mirroring stuff for them to see that's going on and their own anger and then the kids being angry and so you know that what i love about horses you can bring in and i've done this in groups you can bring in six different people and have one horse and that one horse is going to act differently with the six different people the horse is not a chameleon. The horse is not changing to be a different horse. The horse is showing through this kind of reflective um, way of being what's actually going on with each person. And so, um, you know, it brings up so much for people. They can't get a hello from a horse and then they have this story of rejection, but it's like, what's going on inside of you that may not be allowing that horse to come into your space and, and greet you? And, and how do you shift? And what's so cool is we create change in real time. Like we're actually doing things in real time with our whole bodies and our mind and our emotion to see how the shifts can change and the horses give us immediate feedback, which is so cool. It is so can, cool. Can you, that, that's an awesome example of like having like six people working with the horse and the horse is showing and reflecting back. So when that's going on and you have somebody who is not getting that connection with the horse, what can you give or what do you, how do you change that? Before we do that, what I was going to say is for those people that don't really know, can you give us just a little bit more information about, I don't know, like what a session looks like or, or what might happen and then finish up with how do you change that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just for people who don't like know what it is. They're like, what, what we're, we're, we're even talking about. Yes, yeah. for sure. I know it helps to have that mental picture. So, you know, we are on the ground 
without tack or equipment on a horse, allowing a horse to be fully themselves in an enclosed area of some sort, a pasture or a paddock or arena. And the horse is willingly choosing to interact or not interact with humans that are there. Everyone's on the ground. There's no riding. And, you know, there's often an intention stated in the beginning of something someone wants to work on, whether they want to grow trust or they want to grow self-love or they want to work on leadership or mindfulness. And so then the conversation and the questions uh, and the practices and the exercises that we do with horses is all tailored to that person or that group's intention and what they want to explore. Um, and so, you know, to answer your question, Trina, on like, how would you encourage them to shift? I like what you said before, Kim, in terms of like, let me just take a breath. <sighs> like, how does that, you know, I have seen so many times if a horse is not interested to, for myself or for others to be able to take a breath recenter, um, potentially even just putting your hand on your heart. And literally the second you do, you feel the beating of your heart and that energy and being able to drop into that. They're not as interested when we're up in our heads, right? When we're analyzing so much and we're just not in our power center up here. And this is kind of bubble energy because they don't, they don't use their brains to process. They use their huge guts and their huge hearts. And you know, their amygdala is bigger than ours. And if that's what drove them, they'd be in fear all the time. But they're in these beautiful states of relaxed alertness. And so we get to meet them there in that space with them through meditation and whatnot. And so breath, centering, feel, one of the, my favorite things is to get people to wiggle their toes inside of their shoes so that they can feel the earth more and actually feel grounded to potentially drop tree branches or trunks out of their shoes and dropping down into the earth um, and getting grounded. Because the horses really, they live in the present moment as do all animals and they are encouraging us to join them in that space and that's where the best connection can be. That's so beautiful. I know there's times that I've like gone riding and I don't ride all the time very not much at all but I love being around the horses and um and yes they are large animals <laughs> you know for, for people who weren't around them that much but like I know one time when I was riding and we were like trotting and I was like jumping all over the place and then I was like okay I need to connect with the earth and I just I did exactly almost what you just said where I felt like I grew roots into the earth like through the saddle like down through the whole entire horse's body and it completely changed the gait and we started connecting and diving together and then like you know it was a lot smoother of a ride um but that's the awesome stuff about working with horses they teach you so much and, and like you said it's way beyond the bubble of your head and yeah. we get so caught up in our daily lives being stuck in our head yes and what's so neat is they're teaching us, you know, these deep stress management tools and also emotional regulation, self-regulation, but not from that scientific perspective, which we often see like psychotherapy go into um, of like, here's how to self-regulate and it becomes more of a to-do. The horse is just their way of being is self-regulation, right? And it's, and they have to, because if they stress too much, they can have challenges happen with colic or other things. And so they are constantly coming into being aware of what's going on, but not being hyper vigilant. And in a herd, they have roles where, you know, there's a sentinel and there's a, hoard, a horse watching for the herd, what, you know, and taking care of the whole herd. And, and I think in society, because of all the trauma we've been through, and even more so now, there's a lot of that hyper vigilance going on. Um, and it, horses just can help us to, to relax. So a lot of people even who, you know, have had horses their whole life, they're like, oh, my horse is my, my therapist or my, um, my best friend, because they know that just by being with them, a lot of emotion that's kind of stuck comes up naturally. Cause I feel horses really want us to be purified, like in the deep way of wanting us to clear out emotional baggage and mental processes and thoughts and judgments that don't work and just coming into this more clear relaxed but still aware space because that's where they live and that's what feels good to them yeah i think it's interesting too like so many things are probably so so kate and i you know 
I've shared a little bit. I've, I had a, I've had a pretty traumatic 12 months. Um, and so I've done a lot of stuff. And a few months ago, not quite a few, a couple of months ago, Kate and I did a session together when she was out uh, in California with me. And I can be one of those headspace people. You know, I can really like think, think, think. And what's really cool for me, the way I would describe it, one of the things that I've noticed is that the horses really, well, first of all, I've like, I've actually read somewhere that they can mimic, they can match your, their heart rate to your heart rate. And it helps like your, is it Trina, is it the parasympathetic or the sympathetic nervous system that that would, because I get those mixed up. It actually <laughs> energetically helps regulate one of those. The flight one. It helps regulate the flight one. <laughs> Actually, the parasympathetic, right? The parasympathetic. Um, but also the other piece of that is that, and I'm thinking, do you remember when Rox went like a little bit nuts? And he, so we were working in a smaller area than we might normally prefer to work in. And he was like running and bucking. And I was like, ah, but all of that, what I noticed now, like reflecting on that, it like instantaneously put me back into my body, down out of my head into my body into probably what you would call the heart center, just by moving his body, which is kind yeah. of fascinating to me. Because it can be, you, we all, those of you who like to head trip know how hard it is to stop. But they can just like, that get you back in your body and experience. I've seen it so many times too with like um and maybe you want to speak to a little bit about this Kate like with doing your you know equine therapy like with the kids or young adults who are on the spectrum and even those who are nonverbal the connection that they have and that ability to have that innate like almost telepathic conversation with a horse is amazing because it's really what we're talking about getting out of the head and being that heart centered. And it helps so much with just overall body connection and getting them to know where they are in space. But then it also helps with that. Actually, somebody can hear me. Someone's really listening to me and they can hear what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, I find everyone loves that because what happens is a horse that knows that you need a, their head on they'll on your heart, they'll come up and put their head right on their heart, or they'll come up and lean their head right on your shoulder, and you'll and you know you just see people melt into their energy and into their love. So the power of unconditional love works for all of us, right? That's why this work is so powerful. And, you know, with those on the spectrum, one of the, the first trainings I did in the equine therapy world was uh, with horse boy, with, with um, the horse boy process, which is really helping um, caretakers, parents, and, and kids that are um, on the spectrum learn. Uh, some of it was mounted work, but these somatic poses, which I actually have done many for myself, um, and also with clients that are not on the spectrum, but having, you know, your hands and your arms laying over the front of a horse's neck, laying backwards into a surrendered position over the back of a horse and then turning around and doing it that way. And I've had, you know, parents tell me they've never seen their kid that calm. They've never, you know, had, um, their kid just get to that point. Cause I can sometimes work with, re um, like hyper kids as well and just starting to just deeply relax and we do we entrain to the way of the horse and I'm often saying like what if we could be more like a horse right what if we could because they have such evolved communication systems ways of being um, people love their majesty they love that love and so I just think we have a lot to learn from them and everyone takes something different when they come and horses seem to know exactly what to do. We are often saying like, oh, you can't make this up because it's like so perfect in that moment. And we do have to be in our bodies to your point before too, Kim, because we don't want to get stepped on and horses can move very quick and they're very big as we, as you said too, Trina. And so 
it's that matter of being able to be so in your body that if you need to take a step back, you can. If you need to put your arms up to draw a boundary, you can. Um, and so it really helps people because besides maybe the gym or certain sports, when else do we just naturally get put into our bodies? But that's where the present moment is felt the most is when we're in our bodies. And that's actually where we access all of our power. Um, and especially for women, like lately, just this, I was with working with a coach the other day and it's like dropping into the womb area too, right? And how much power there is there in the stomach and, and the gut and then our heart. Like there's so much more to us than, than these just walking heads, you know? It's interesting too that, I mean, just the way that you're talking about it, why it's become such a big thing for people on the spectrum and for the for nonverbal autistic children and 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 also for um, I have a, a friend whose daughter has CP and she goes you know at least once a week and I just I'm realizing like it's very difficult for those people with those challenges to be present in their body yeah. and what's really cool is that they're able to do it with the horses in a way that isn't hard, that makes it ease for them to do that. That's really cool. I can't even, like, it makes me almost emotional to think about, like, the relief they must experience being able to, like, be with their body. Yeah. What you were talking about earlier, you know, when she was talking about being highly sensitive, mm -hmm. and the horses are highly sensitive, and um, that's what I've seen a lot. Like, all of us who are empathic, or who might want to say an introvert, highly sensitive, really aware, um, and those on the spectrum, or even with CP, and I've even seen it with like Down syndrome, where they are so aware of everything going on around them, and so are the horses, so it's like finally being able to identify that in yourself, like you were just saying before, it's like that reflection of um, what's going on, and then to perceive like the whole strength and power of the horse, it just it does. I've seen um, kids, young adults, who are, like that are, you know, all like looking around everywhere. And as soon as they're around a horse, it's like, whoa, and they're completely present. It's such an awesome experience. It is. I love watching them focus and land, right? Like they're so, <laughs> and I as a kid had a lot of like ADHD and riding was the best thing in the world for me because they say it gives us a lot of empowerment. And that, that was one of my favorite moments was watching um, an autistic child get on the back of a horse and you know, on the ground was in what I would call a flare, but just a full expression of, you know, um, emotion and movement and, and you know, what would, to another person may look like chaos, but then gets on the horse, goes into verbal expression, is able to answer questions. How are you doing? Good. Can you tell the horse to go right? Right. Being able to talk to the horse, huge smile. Like it's like what it's like the fastest transformation. It's like watching a different being. Um what I love, you know, even though I don't work a lot with uh, with autism, I love watching any person come in and like a little more like this, more from, you know, they're punched over, more, more sad, more constricted, more stressed, a little like just heavy, just, there's just heavy energy there. And then in two hours being like bright and light and glowing and, and like feeling amazing and being able to take that with them for the day. And it happens to me every single time I go out with them, like no matter what, whatever state I'm in, I'm in a heightened, higher lighter way of being afterwards so that's that's my favorite thing is to watch people just have light like have their energy lightened by them so so true so true cool um did you have another question Kim? well i actually just before but I, I did i do think it's curious um i think that people might be curious even though i know it's sort of slightly off topic um because I don't see loads of people doing the equine coaching or the equine assisted stuff in terms of leadership. And I know that you've done, you've actually done a lot of that. Um, and I'm curious for lots of reasons, but I just, I would, it would be, I'd love to talk about that and like how you use it or I don't know. Um, just because I think that like, 
uh, I don't know. I just would like to, I, to, to hear what you know about like the horses and leadership and how, and how, how that is, because that's different, but similar. So I just would love to hear a little bit about that. Yeah, I will. Thank you. I feel like two, there's two types of, of work. One of which is the more quieter, the, the, the highly sensitive person who is working on like self-love, emotional intelligence. We're doing meditations. We're doing healing. Um, the work may look quieter and softer. It is not as action-based. If you watch us You'd see two people on a horse or horses hanging out and you'd be like, what's really going on? But it's so powerful and it's so deep because so much truth gets surfaced for people to explore and um, a lot of emotion too. But then on the other side of that coin uh, is more of the action-based, exercise-based, um, more programmatic type work around like a team building experience or a leadership experience. And, you know, there's essentially two ways that I like to do leadership work right off the bat. One is um, having someone halter, you know, putting on the harness over a horse's head, halter and lead rope and walking around with them on a lead rope and seeing how they do. You know, can they stay with a horse? Are they pulling a horse? Are they dragging a horse? Are they begging a horse to come with them? Is the horse taking off with them and they're being led? So all these little minute things that can happen just with that, right? And most of my clients are not horse people, although some are, um, but even them, they're, whatever they need to see about their own leadership surfaces very quickly because they're in the equine coaching environment and have an intention around leadership, like I need to slow down my leadership. So even if they do know how to move a horse, they're probably gonna have the experience of still feeling like, what are the tools you need to learn how to slow down, right, in the moment, stay in the moment, not let the horse get too far ahead of you. So that's one way is with the halter. And then the other that I love is the liberty work. And actually without any tack or any equipment, how do you essentially, you know, pick an area in an, in an enclosed space and have a horse join you and work and walk side by side with you to that area? How do you create a plan and, and start a leadership journey where you're just basically through energy getting a horse to join with you? And there's a lot of people that teach um, pressure and release and more of like a dominant submission type thing around leadership. Horses have learned that way for a long time and it can work, but my experience is how do we do respect and rapport with a horse? So a horse will respect you if you work through pressure and release and dominance and submission, but because of where we are in our society, I don't want more dominance and submission. I just don't want to see it. I don't want to be a part of it. So what the horses are teaching now, the more evolved way that they're teaching leadership is through energetic ways of being which is the highest form is love and joy, right? And so when you get into those spaces and, and sometimes some of my clients have to fake it until they, until they make it, they have to cultivate joy if they're not feeling it. But one, how do you get into that place of like inner confidence where you know you can partner and lead this horse and then clarity, where are you going? But then also the energetics of like, it's fun to be with me. I'm going to love you and be kind and create this joyful experience. And how do you partner energies that way? And it's not easy to teach that way. That's why a lot of horsemanship, they're not teaching that. There's no formula because it's all about your own unique, authentic expression of joy and love that creates it. But my mare taught me this one day. I was at a training, a Liberty training, and I literally felt like she called me back to the barn. And I left the training that I paid for halfway through, drove to the barn and went, what? What am I doing here? Are you okay? And she goes, I will teach you how to do this stuff. Stop learning from humans. And I went, oh my God. So we go in the arena and we start playing with them. First thing she says to me is drop your agenda. Stop the control. Stop it. And I was like, okay. And then she just kept getting into this like, how is, can this be fun for you? How can this be fun for me, right? And if you think about it, the best leaders make so much fun for their team. They make everyone feel heard and seen and loved and appreciated. And then they are, people are so much more productive. So that's really where I think they're teaching. They're teaching leadership through partnership, but also through ways of being. And it's not there's no formula to it. It's, and and it, it by no means is, I'll tell you what to do and you're going to do it. That's so old school, right? So anyways, thank you for asking because I get so passionate about yeah. that. Well, I'm curious too, like 
how is it for the people to then translate that experience to people and not I love that I wish people asked me that more or I wish maybe I remember to talk about it more so thank you yeah you know part of what it is is that um you know like think for a second about doing a hula hoop right and you immediately think of like moving your hips and you think about what you need to do there's an embodied way that you know how to do hula hoop and you can access it just by me saying that so what happens is as people practice leadership with their whole being right and think about the old way we were in boardrooms seeing powerpoints or having conversations and we're seeing here right because this is the safety zone for a lot of people especially a lot of people in corporations but what happens when you're with a horse is you're in your body because you don't want to get stepped on and you need to be for them to even listen to you and you're getting it you're getting it in cellular memory you're getting the embodied somatic experience and so people then train they have it more in them um, and I, and I also think like, you know, once is enough, but to, for people to get their first aha or their first insight, I had a woman leader from a team once she could, she had to do this leadership exercise. She took her whole hands and did this around the horse's nose and dragged that horse into the, uh, we do thing, this thing called leadership in a box. And everyone was like, and everyone on the team was like, that's how she is. She strongholds all of us. And so we were, and you know, so my question to her afterwards was, how did that make you feel? And then like to the team, how did that make you feel? And they were, all, and it was like this clear example that, you know, how you do one thing is how you do anything. And she, maybe she, that worked for her, but like it was making everyone else terrified of her. And quite frankly, she had so much of her own, self-hatred is a strong word, but like so much of her own, like just not wanting to show up that way anymore that she saw so quickly because of how she went, what she went to just to get the win and just to get it to work. So there's a lot, I think, um, in this space because we get to see it in real time. We watch others lead. We learn from others when we're watching, especially in a group environment. And then we see ourselves do stuff, right? I still like, it took me a year because I was still doing too much push in my leadership until, and I was, it wasn't working until I finally got to, how do I breathe? How do I pause? How do I actually use visualization as one of my superpowers to get a horse to do things? And how do I go into like, we're doing this together and it's going to be a blast. Let's go. And, and I, I've, so I've been able to cultivate so many skills that I never, ever would have had before in any other way without the horses, truly. And I'm still learning so much about leadership because it's like this never ending journey because we haven't had excellent role models in our society around leadership. And, um, but the horses are there for us if we choose them. Yeah. That's really cool. Those are super cool examples. It really shows you about taking action, you know, being with yourself and being present and from that space, taking action versus like what you're saying, doing it from a push and a shove that so many of us have been taught to do. Yeah. Yeah. Just work harder. Just push more. Just make it happen. Just hustle. Just do it. And it's like, you know, and I, I watched a, a bunch of sales guys try that once too. And it was chaos out there with this very sensitive, one of the most sensitive mares I've ever worked with. And she was, it was just chaos, horse running around, mess, until I was said, okay, guys, go back and connect with the source. And they did. And they went over and started to touch her and, and be with her and breathe and hang out. And they got emotional. And they were like, I was like, okay, so now what about the goal? They're like, we don't, we don't care about the goal as much anymore. I'm like, what do you care about right now? And they're like connection. I'm like, yeah. And don't you think every great sales relationship comes from connection first? Like that's where it's at that relationship. And they were like, light bulbs just going on. Right. So it's so neat to watch because it happens so fast and people, because the aha moment is felt in their hearts and in their bodies, it lasts. It, the people take it with them, you know? Right. And it's it's almost it sounds almost like it's not really like you have to translate it it's like because it's in the cellular memory it's a new way of being like so that you 
it's there and then you carry it forward into yes. everything that you do. I've had a lot of people say, I'll never forget that moment with when, you know, this horse did this or that happened and they, they'll keep a, a photo with them on their phone as a memory or um, we'll all often ask people to journal. And then part of the debrief, especially when we do more leadership trainings is, you know, writing it down. How can you apply this to work? You know, where, what do you need to slow down? And I know a lot of people are just meeting to meeting to meeting and it's like, okay, could you do a 45 minute meeting instead of an hour and have 15 minutes to regroup and reset, you know, do some follow up instead of this like plowing from one thing to the next, which we see a lot of in corporate. So, you know, and then you're more productive if you have some breaks and whatnot. So we definitely bring it back either to relationships outside of the arena or the workplace or whatever that context is through, through questions, right? That's where me being a coach comes in. Yeah, cool. Trina, do you have anything else, Trina? Any, anything else we, we wanna talk about? No, I think that was a wonderful conversation for people to listen to and take in, especially in our society and what's all been going on. You know, just being able to like be present like Kate was saying and take a deep breath and observe and acknowledge versus doing that whole push and shove and how much you get done. I mean, it's really changing um, the whole definition of leadership. Yeah. Cool. Much more of the feminine is coming in, which is what we need because we've been out of balance for a while. So I'm, ex- I'm excited to see people embrace mindfulness more because that's really what it is. So, and I love how you said observe because that's a lot of it too. Yeah. So um, if people want to find more about you and where you are and what you're doing, how do they do that? Yeah, sure. So current website is consciousrockstar.com and it will eventually be katenelligan.com. I'm on Facebook uh, on Kate Nelligan, Inst- sorry, Kate Nelligan Equine Coach on Facebook. Uh, same on Instagram, Kate Nelligan Equine Coach. And I have a Facebook group called Equine Rockstars, which is all horse resources, inspirational horse content. Um, thank you, Kim, for being in there with us. And um, uh, yeah, and then it's equine coaching, privates and workshops. Um, I'm doing a lot virtually right now as well. And um, some themes. Actually, for- I just have to interrupt that and say, she has been doing this really cool thing that you can sign up for. And it's very, very affordable. And she goes out into the middle of the paddock with her laptop and does like horse reading sort of, right? Like you'll do like meditations with the goats and the donkeys and the horses. And then also like people can ask questions and then the horses will provide information much like it would occur if we, if you were in person. So if you're curious, especially for all, because there's so many people that are like, don't, they're not near horses. They don't, you know, so this is definitely something you guys should check out if you're curious, because the virtual stuff that Kate's doing is really cool. And it will give you a very good taste of what is possible with that and what it would be like. So, yes. Yes, extra personal plug. Is a horse's face like up against your face in person, but this is my next best thing, which is the virtual. And it's been neat. We've had countries from all over the world join us. We've been doing some heart math and horses stuff too, and um, doing the weekly Heaven on Earth series because I want people to be able to meditate and receive guidance from the animals. So that's that's what a lot. Of, it's, I'm so grateful to have technology for all of this. So yeah. Perfect. So I will have all of, we'll have all of that information in the notes under the video and in the podcast posting down below, you'll see links and everything about how to find everybody and everything that we talked about today. So that's it for this episode. We'll see you guys later. Thank Bye. you. Kate. Thank you Thanks so much. Thank you for listening to the show. Our target is to make your awareness easy to use and to acknowledge the power of not fitting in. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe to our channel on YouTube and share it with someone you know. Why fit in when you were born to stand out? Embrace your difference. Join the Misfit Squad.